So go to your pantry and get out your white bread and let's craft. For this recipe, I use one slice of white bread and the Aline's Original Tacky Glue. And first what you do is you take your slice of bread, you remove the crust, and break it into little pieces into the cup. Also, day-old bread works better. This is actually a couple days old, and it's perfect. Now, to one slice of bread, I'm going to add one tablespoon of the original Lean's Tacky Glue. And make sure that it is a level tablespoon. There we go. use a craft stick to put it into the bread and then I also add a dab of cold cream if you want to color it you're going to add acrylic paint for this rose I used white and you do need to, even though it looks like it's going to be white, you do need to add paint for the white color. Otherwise, when your bread dries, it'll look uh, kind of translucent. So you're going to mix it all around. And yes, you're going to put it into your hands. Never fear, though, it always comes off. Make sure you get off the sides. And when it all sticks together, you can move it into your hands. Now what I like to do first, make sure I don't have any glue on my hands, and I like to put a little bit of the cold cream on my hands. And take it, put it all in my hand, make sure I get it all And for a few minutes, it will be messy, but I promise you, it will get your hands clean eventually. Actually, you have to remind you, too, your hands should be clean before you start. And you just keep mixing. And it gets really sticky looking like that, but I promise you, it does come off. You can already see it starting to come off on this side. Now remember this is an air dry clay, so it needs to be in, kept in a plastic bag when you're not using it. And it lasts about a week when it's outside the refrigerator, maybe two or three weeks if it's in the refrigerator, but I definitely would try and use it right away. Again, even if it has one little spot, it still isn't done. I can get that clean. And if it's really, really stubborn, then put a little bit more of the cold cream on your hands. And then put it into a plastic bag. I have in this plastic bag I have another batch that I made a little bit earlier so I like to let it rest for a little bit maybe 10-15 minutes before I work with it so let me clean my hands off and I'll be right back so I've cleaned my space I cleaned my hands and that's given time for my bread dough with glue to kind of rest it just needs to rest after you've 
uh, put it into a ball. So now it's ready to create a, a rose. Now, when you go to create a rose, you're going to uh, pull off pieces and make them into a ball. They all need to be consistent. And if you think about a garden pea, then that's what you need to make them all the same size. Now, this piece that I'm using needs to be put into the bag while I'm creating each piece of um, my dough. So I'm going to put it in the bag. I've got a couple pieces out here. We can make the first um, and second petal. So if your hands are dry, then again, put a little bit of the um, cold cream on them. And this is the most important step on each rose that you make, is you want to really squish that petal so that it's really, really like paper thin. That's what makes it look more uh, porcelain is when you have it really thin. So I have my first petal and I'm going to make my bud. I roll it and then I just push a little bit back here so as I roll it, that edge goes a little bit back. And there's my bud. You can actually use this just like this if you want a bud. And my second petal, again, paper thin. Go all around the, the piece of clay the bread dough. It looks just like clay. And then put this up for my next petal. Wrap it around and push your edges down for your petal. And you know, if you happen to have a really a real rose around, you can always look at a real rose for the placement of the petals. Again, paper thin. Put it up opposite the last one that you did. Roll your edges back, and there you have a medium size. Next petal. I'm going to put this down for a second. Create my next petal. And Put it over on this side and roll it over like so. Now, when you watch the top of your rose, you want to make sure that all your petals are even because if you go down, put them down too low, then it starts to look like a pine cone. Now, mine's kind of thick here, so I'm going to just roll it a little bit and I'm going to take off some of that extra. That's because some of my uh, balls of dough are a little bit too big. We'll take one more here. And where does it need one? Here's a good spot. And there you have your rose. Now, I would let this dry. And when it's dry, I would probably cut off the back of it. And sometimes to let it dry, I will put a toothpick in the bottom and just stick it into something that uh, will hold it. I want to show you how to make leaves. Put that right there. Now I did my green mixture the same way, except for I added the green uh, paint. Where I, you know, on the rose we added the the white, and this one I added the green. So we want to create a teardrop. like so. And then just flatten it. And I have a little piece of plastic here. This actually is opaque shrink plastic. I like the way that it's flexible. And this creates my veins. Put one like that. That. Go back. Now, here's one of the little secrets, the designer secrets. Go back to each vein and push it back. Push it back, and that gives it a little bit more real looking. Pinch the top edge and the bottom edge, and there you have your leaf. Super simple. 
I wanted to show you two different rocks that I made, the paperweights. This one is like this. It's the pure color of the white that I made. This one, it's kind of a little hard to, to tell there. You can kind of see. I put a little bit of the black uh, acrylic paint. You can see it on the leaves too. Before, when I was mixing the, the dough in the final stages, I actually put a little bit of black to make it look like it was a little bit of a stone look. So it toned it down a little bit. I really like that look. Perfect porcelain rose just made out of bread and glue. A lot of times when Heidi and I are teaching the bread dough roses in class, the biggest mistake, and I think you mentioned this in your demo, is that the petals are too thick. Right. You've got to remember to do, just squish them in between your fingers, squish, and you know, if you notice, I kind of went around and squished them, just as far, I mean, it's almost paper thin. That's what makes them look the best. Well, take a close-up look at these, because I also asked Heidi to do a couple of variations. Right, the first one that you're going to see is just the one like I, that I made on um, in the how-to. It's only the, the white paint, uh, you have the white rose and the leaves. And then I thought, well, if I wanted, she wanted me to, to kind of get like a, a stone look. So the next one I put, when I went to go make my um, my rose, I took just a chunk of the bread dough and put just a, just a dab of, like put a toothpick into the paint, put the paint, uh, black paint into my bread dough and I just, kind of mixed it a little bit and so when I made my rose it had a little bit more of a look of stone and I did the same thing with my green my green dough so a little bit different um, look and I think if you look really closely it, it does it has the look of stone I Good also, idea. I, it, thank you well I gave <laughs> Heidi the assignment of she brought these stones in and I said paperweight <laughs> and I said can you make the flowers look like stones mm -hmm. and so the marbleized effect is really cool yeah. I also want everyone to see your necklace because this is the coolest. <laughs> I took on this necklace I took some uh, braid that I had it's actually um, I think it's actually for doing like home decor things and I made a necklace out of it it's, it's my base is the is the braid but if you look really closely all the purple different color purple roses are actually the bread dough roses that I just made and then I have all kinds of vintage buttons so it's very hard for me to let go of a necklace like this because it has some, some of my favorite buttons on it but I just love the, the look of this. It's very vintage looking. It's it's just, total, this one's totally me. And this <laughs> one caught mom's yeah. eye when she walked in. It's like, oh my gosh, look at how beautiful that is. But she forgot too that um, at a, a recent show she went to like a year ago, I made the exact same one in brown tones and she wore it the whole time. Do you remember that mom? No. <laughs> yeah, it's in brown tones and you wore it and everybody goes, what's, oh, what's your necklace made? Everybody came up and looked at your necklace. Where is that necklace? Unfortunately, it's when you studio. wear something like that, you don't see it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Good point, Mom. So, super cool. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. <laughs>